One more important topic that we need to talk about in chapter one is that of dimensional analysis. Now dimensional analysis is going to be a tool that we're going to use to evaluate uh, the validity of an equation. Now using dimensional analysis does not necessarily mean uh, if you get a positive result that your equation is valid, but we can use this rule to help us uh, guide uh, or use this as a guide through our equation uh, processes and our deriving of equations. So this first rule is of paramount importance, okay? If an equation does not have the same units on both sides, it is not a valid equation. Now, I cannot stress this enough. If you do not have the same units on both sides of your equation, your equation is wrong. Now, the converse is not necessarily true, okay? If your units match on both sides, that does not necessarily mean your equation is correct, but it means at least that uh, you're on the right track. Now, how can we actually use dimensional analysis to uh, look at the validity of equations? So, first we have to look at uh, what the units of some of the typical types of quantities we're going to be using are. We've already defined speed as distance over time, and we're going to define acceleration as um, distance per unit time squared, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do, if you recall, there are three basic quantities that we use in mechanics, and those are length, time, and mass. So when looking at dimensional analysis, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign length as a capital L, time as a capital T, and mass as a capital M, and then I'm also going to put these in braces. Okay, or actually brackets. All right. Now, here's how we're going to use this. We've already seen uh, some basic equations. Okay, now I'm going to write uh, an equation on the board that uh, you may or may not have seen, uh, but bear with me for the moment. And we're going to say that okay. So let's dissect this equation uh, a little bit. So v we've already defined as velocities uh, slash speeds, okay. And as we've seen before, speed. has the units of distance per time, and in the SI system, that is meters per second, okay? Now, meters is a unit of length, right? And seconds is a unit of time. So generically, okay, whether we define it in meters per second or miles per hour, kilometers per hour, kilometers per second, whatever uh, actual units we're using, they will always be a length per unit time. So generically, speed will have the units of length per unit time. Okay? Now, this is the way we're going to do dimensional analysis. Anytime we have a variable in an equation, we're going to use the generic um, unit. Okay, we're not going to necessarily use the SI unit, we're going to use the generic unit because we could be working in different sets of units. But the bottom line is, if I have a speed, I know regardless of what units uh, I'm working with, that the um, definition will always be length per unit time. Okay, so this is a speed. This equation, uh, I should mention, okay, this equation is saying that your final velocity of an object is equal to its initial velocity plus an acceleration times a time, okay? And so this is also a speed or velocity. This is an acceleration. And this is a time. Okay, so I'm going to write down the units generically uh, for each of these um, terms and then see if both sides match, okay? Now, one thing we need to know is we need to know what the units of acceleration are. Well, acceleration has the units in SI of meters per second per second, 
and we're not going to define what that means here, but we will uh, in a few more videos. Okay, but meters per second per second is the same thing as meters per second squared. Okay, and so what that tells us is in our generic units, this is going to be the same thing as length per time squared. Okay, so when we start to plug in our, our generic units here, we're going to have uh, lengths and times. And as you can see, mass does not come into this equation, so we're not going to be working with mass here. Okay, but we'll do some examples where they do. Okay, so I've already said that this is an equation that we're going to see, so you, uh, that should give you a hint that this one is a valid equation. But let's go ahead and look at um, how to do the dimensional analysis and see that the units on both sides of this equation uh, match. Okay, So we already know that velocity has units of length per unit time. And here's the goal of dimensional analysis. Okay, what I'm going to do is look at the units on this side of the equation and see if they all boil down to length per unit time. Okay? And my initial velocity, of course, is also going to share the same units since it's the same type of quantity. Now my acceleration has length per unit time squared. Okay. And of course, my time is just going to be time. All right. Now, here's uh, the rules for doing dimensional analysis. Okay, units can be multiplied and divided on a whim. Okay, you can multiply and divide any set of units you want to. You can multiply lengths with times. You can multiply masses with lengths. You can do anything. You can divide masses divided by length. You can divide masses by lengths cubed, um, whatever. But anytime you have an addition sign, your units must be the same type of unit. Okay, your, your overall units must be of the same type. So in other words, what we should get here are the units for speed. Okay, Because if I don't get the units for speed, then I cannot add these units to this unit of speed. Okay? And if you think about it, that should make sense. All right? um, let's say I wanted to add uh, a unit of kilograms and a unit of, uh, or, or a unit of mass and a unit of length mass plus length, that doesn't make any sense. So if I'm going to add or subtract, then I have to have the same type of unit. Okay, But units also act as algebraic variables. So as we see here, I have length per unit time squared multiplied by time. So my time here will cancel out with one of the times here, and I'll just be left with length per unit time. So now I have length per unit time plus length per unit time. And when you're doing dimensional analysis, normally since these are algebraic variables, we would say, you know, length over time plus length over time would be two length over time. But since we're only looking at the dimensions and making sure the dimensions work, we can throw out the two. All we care about is does this side have units of length per time? And they do, okay? So this has units of length per time, and this has units of length per time. And therefore, the units on the equation check out. Now, once again, just going through this process does not guarantee your equation will be correct. But it does tell you that if your units don't balance, then the equation is not correct. And let's look at an example where that happens. Okay, so suppose you're deriving an equation uh, to solve a problem and you arrive at this type of formula right here. Okay, now x again is usually denoted as a position, and a position is going to have a length 
from the origin, right? If I measure a position from the origin, that position is going to have a unit of length. So our velocity here is going to be length per time, our acceleration is going to be length per time squared, and our um, x value here is going to be position, all right? So what we would have is length per time on this side, and we want to know does that equal length per time squared times length, right? And what we can see is that this side gives us length squared over time squared. And length squared over time squared does not equal length per time. So this would be an invalid equation, OK? So we cannot use that equation to solve a problem with. That means if we were deriving uh, our, a solution and we arrived here, that uh, our, there's a mistake in our derivation somewhere that we would have to go back and find and try and correct, OK? Now here's another pitfall with dimensional analysis. Uh, another equation uh, that we may work with would look something like this. Okay, now this is a valid equation as we will see in the next set of videos, um, but it, suppose you accidentally dropped the one half and you just wrote this down as your answer, okay? So what this is saying is that uh, some position uh, under constant acceleration, we're going to assume constant acceleration as you'll see in the next videos, um, is equal to one half times acceleration times time squared. But let's say you forgot the one half, okay? So if I do the dimensional analysis, uh, I'll write this one up here. If I do the dimensional analysis, this is length. Now, the constants that you might have in your equation, things like factors of 1 half, 2, pi, anything that's just a pure number does not carry units with it, OK? So I'm going to leave the 1 half out of the unit uh, analysis or the dimensional analysis. and. As you can see, this equation gives us unit of length. Okay, um, so by dimensional analysis, that would be a valid equation. But by dimensional analysis, this one also has units that come out to be the same on both sides. Because again, if the factor of one half doesn't carry units, then I would have the exact same uh, formulation for my right side of my equation here. And so just because your equation comes out does not mean you've remembered to take into account those constants, those things like factors of 1 half or 2 uh, pi, uh, the different types of constants that can come up quite often. Okay, But once again, just doing the dimensional analysis does not guarantee your equation to be correct, but if your units don't come out, you know it's incorrect. So it can be a very useful guide, okay? So let's uh, do one more, slightly more uh, exotic example, okay? And this is the, um, period for the length of a pendulum, okay? So if I have a, a string and I hang a mass from the string and I let it swing back and forth, this equation tells us uh, how fast, uh, or, or the time it takes rather, for the swing to complete one full cycle, okay? Now, t, t is your period, so this has units of time. 2 pi, again, does not carry any units. L is the length of a string, so this is going to be length. And G is the gravitational acceleration due to Earth, so this is going to be units of length per time squared. 
So notice that once again, as I said, you can multiply and divide constant or uh, uh, units at will. I'm going to have a length divided by a length per unit time, um, but I just would not be able to add those different uh, units. Okay. So two pi does not carry units, and I have the square root of length divided by length per unit time squared. Now, length divided by length per unit time, I'm going to drop the braces for brevity here. Length divided by length per unit time squared is the same thing as length times time squared over length. So my lengths are going to cancel out and I'm left with the uh, square of time. And since we can treat these as algebraic variables, we can see that all I need to do is uh, undo the square root. And the square root of t squared is just t. And we can see that the period of the pendulum has the units uh, of time on both sides of the equation. Okay. So hopefully those uh, examples uh, will help guide you as you are looking through your own derivations. All right, we'll see you next time.